I have prepared an 8 bar loop to show you the main functions of the audio editor. We've got a guitar track here, a bass track and a drum track. In order to open the audio editor, you select, uh, select a part and double click on the part. The audio editor opens. Um, to close it you press return again as usual. And if you want to open the editor with two parts selected, you need to select them first and then go for the edit menu, select edit or press ctrl E on the keyboard. And now both um, recordings, both audio files are in the audio editor. We've got the guitar one here and the bass one down there. To close that one again, you press enter or return as usual. So let's open the audio editor again and have a look at the, um, the views and everything while I play the track. So I double click on the bass part. This is the bass segment, one of the segments. And here's another segment. Let's start with some easy things. We can colorize these, these elements here by clicking on, let's say, color by parts. And if we do color by parts, it means that it's looking for what colors we've got here. So if we give these ones different colors, and then open all those three tracks in one go, you can see they've all got different colors now. The next area you can adjust the view with is here in the view drop down menu. So you've got a few little options here. For example, if we untake waveforms, the waveforms disappear. Let's put this one back again. Untake names, the names have disappeared. The names of the segments, like guitar, bass one, bass one, drum loop. Do this thing again. At one point, you might find that the names are in the way of moving the handles and things like that. So this is how you can get rid of them. Now I've just said it, these here are called the handles and if you untake the handles there they disappear. If you untake the names as well you get um, completely clean segments. Let's bring the handles back again. That's the starting point of the of the segment. This is the end of this segment but it means that the wave file is actually longer than the end of the segment and here again the starting point but the actual wave file is longer than the segment and the end point of the segment the um, wave file again is, is still longer. We'll talk about those um, handles later on and this is your your cue point or your cue handle and we have to talk about the cue point later on as well it's quite important this one um, and then this is the lane info. So lane info is the, the left side. Now we can see what um, what channel these segments are playing on. So if we bring up the lane info again, now we can see here the guitar segment is playing on channel 1. The bass segments are both playing on channel 3. And the drum loop, which is a stereo um, file, is playing on... Um, channels 5 and channel 6 and it repeats on here again channels 5 and channel 6 and I'll now close the editor just to see whether these parts are really playing on the channels that we've got here so the guitar part is on channel 1, the bass part on channel 3 and the loop is on channels 5 and 6 so I'll close the editor let's check it here channel 1, channel 3 and channels 5 and 6 you can see you've got the stereo wave form here and these are two mono waveforms. We'll bring up the editor again. And this also leads us to talking about lanes. Lanes are these white spaces here. We've got lots of different lanes. Um, the guitar part is in one lane on its own. The two bass segments are in two lanes. Really it doesn't matter how many lanes you can see. And um, it doesn't matter whether a segment is in a different lane or so. Lanes are really just there for you to to look at the segments and to organize the segments in, in the audio editor and for you to move the segments around and things like that. Well, you'll see what I mean when we get to the lanes. Um, and if we tick on by output, all the segments um, are being compressed and you can see here the guitar part is still played on, on channel 1 and both bass segments are now on, on channel 3 and both segments are on channels 5 and 6. This is by output. By output means it 
it sorts whatever you've got on the editor by um, by the output. And if you then get rid of the lane info, you can see what channels these um, segments are playing on. So we bring that one back. We open this one up again. And um, the last one that we've got here is called dynamic event, which um, splits the segments into the waveform part of it. And down here we've got a part which can either be a vo volume curve. This is like a, um, the same volume all the way through. Or we've got a little drop down window here, a pan curve. Now we haven't set any, any pan settings, i.e. like left or right, so that's why we can't see anything in here. And the last one is marker points, endpoints. We haven't specified any endpoints, we haven't got any, that's why we can't see anything here, these are empty. But we'll talk about all the different elements here later on. I'll change the view again to what it was before, I'll untick dynamic events. And there we're back, and um, we've got our standard view again. And as with all windows in Cubase, you can change the, the zoom with these down there, and with these, like a um, magnified zoom. And um, you can also use the key commands again, G for horizontal and H for horizontal, zooming in and out. And if you press Shift G and Shift H for vertical zoom in and zoom out, and then finally we've got the little eye here. If I is selected or switched on, it brings up the little info bar here. That's the info line. I off, I on. And um, at the moment none of these segments are selected, but if I select, let's say, this base segment here, then you can see in the info line that the base segment starts in bar 5, beat 1, first 16th node, and then 32 ticks as well, it starts there, you've got bar 5 there, and it ends um, around bar 9. See this one, it ends just before it reaches bar 9. And it also tells you that this segment is called base1. It's um, taken from the file base.wav, and um, if the audio editor window was maximized, you could see that, um, or we can see now, that it's playing on channel 3. I'm now going to close the audio editor by pressing return again. I'll mute the guitar part for the time being and I'll open I'll open this first bass part and I'll also set the loop to go from bar 1 to bar 5 and I use a little shortcut, I press Alt and P at the same time and this will make sure that the left and right locators go around the part that was selected. So now I'll um, open the editor by double clicking on the part and here's my base segment I'll maximize the view a little bit and like this as well and now we're ready to go into the details of the audio editor I'll play the, um, the part we've got the drums in the background and this is the base part that you can see here Okay, if you click on Edit Solo, um, it means that we're soloing whatever we've got in the editor and we can't hear the drums anymore. The shortcut for Edit Solo is A on the keyboard, by the way. So I've pressed A on the keyboard, you can hear the drums again. And if I press A again, you can just hear the bass. And let's start with our tools. The first tool I'm going for is the speaker symbol here. And with the speaker symbol, I can audition certain parts of the audio file. For example, I can click on this bit to hear, or I can click here. So depending on where I click, I can hear the different, um, different notes I've played on the bass. The, um, the little um, variation of this one is if you click on this um, icon here. This is the scrub icon, which means I can go into scrub mode now. And now I don't just click, I have to actually click and drag along the um, segment to create the scrub effect. So here we go. And backwards. Notice that I keep my finger on the mouse. 
if you've worked with tape before, um, you might know this effect, which is um, which is the effect you get when you when you hold the reels with your hands and move the reels backwards and forward very very slowly to find out exactly where you need to cut. This is the scrub tool. So let's switch back to normal audition mode again and have a look at the start and end insets. So I'll go back to my normal arrow. Let's have a look at the end inset first. I can pick up this end insert and um, move it across like that. So this will mean that the um, segment stops um, around beat 3 and it doesn't play the end of the of the fourth bar. I'm going to do the, sim the same trick again, but this time I'll switch on the speaker symbol here. And now whenever I change the end inset, you can hear that the bass part plays up until the end inset, giving you an indication of what will be played until until um, th the segment sto stops. This is great if you need to find exactly where you want to go up to. Back to there again. I mean, what I'm doing here is similar to moving MIDI events around. The only difference is, even though I've got a snap value set here, this one never ever goes with a snap value. You can see I'm, I'm just in front of um, beat 3 there, somewhere in the middle. And if this segment was selected, as it is now, we can see the, the exact position of the end inset here. We're in bar 4, B2, 4th, 16th node and 181 ticks. And if I change this, see we're after beat 4, 2nd, 16th node and, and 1082 ticks. And if you wanted to set the end inset, um, place it at a certain position, you can just double click there. And let's say we want to go to bar 4, and beat 3. So we'll just type in 4.3, return, and we're at bar 4, beat 3, exactly at the first 16th node, and no ticks. And in exactly the same way, we can move the start inset like this. And you can see you've got different start posi positions here. Although, if you specify a start position in the info line, like um, go for bar 2, it'll actually move the whole segment. I'll undo this one, I'll press Ctrl Z to go back to where we were before. Another quick way to set the end inset and start inset is by clicking somewhere on the bottom of the segment, like this, or at the top of the segment, like that for example. See, I'm just clicking anywhere at the top. The top moves the start inset. I'll bring this one back. And then on the bottom one, you select the end inset. So if I'm down here and click on the bottom of the segment, I've moved the end inset. <laughs> 